Hello gardeners. You know, whether you have native plants or not, if you love your garden and have just a little curiosity as well, you can't help but become something of a backyard naturalist. You already pay attention to how much sun, shade, and water is best for your plants, but you soon start paying attention to the hummingbirds, birds, butterflies, bees, and bugs that buzz around your plants and flowers. So in this video, I'll show some examples of how some of my plants grew and changed throughout springtime this past year. And I'll also include some shots of birds and insects which were attracted to the blossoming flowers. And I'll roll out the plants more or less according to the color wheel. This is Tacoma Crimson Flare. These amazing tubular blossoms appear in spring and are still there in summer and into fall after the flowers from most other plants have faded. It should slowly grow into a good sized shrub. This with the peach colored blossoms is Desert Globe Mallow. It grows in the California desert and elsewhere throughout the West. It likes lots of sun and will thrive in a hot spot in your garden and it attracts pollinators, honeybees, and ladybugs, to name a few. This variety of lantana produces a profusion of blossoms that attract pollinators, including skippers and a gulf fritillary. This is a non-native milkweed Milkweed is the host food for monarch butterflies, meaning its caterpillars eat milkweed and nothing but milkweed. These, of course, are California poppies. These are very easy to grow, doing well in full sun or part shade. Do a series of plantings of poppy seed, beginning in January and again in February, March, and April. That way the poppies should bloom from February through May and beyond. Now we transition into yellow, beginning with sun drops. They flower spring through fall, except they may languish in the heat of August and September, and you may have to cut them back to encourage new growth. This is Damianita daisy. They have a long bloom season, and I recently learned that they are among the host plants for the dainty sulfur butterfly. This female is laying its eggs on a Damianita daisy. Here is California Coast Sunflower, whose blooms attract a variety of pollinators, including honeybees, another species of bee, skippers, another native California bee, and I don't know what this is. Here are the Palo Verde trees when they first put out blossoms. Some weeks later, the blossoms were more profuse. While in bloom, it attracts a variety of buzzing insects, including honeybees, carpenter bees, plus other varieties of bees. After its blossoms fade, this morning cloak uses it as a perch to oversee its territory. Now onto blue. This is Big Swing Sage with the deep blue color. Here in my microclimate, 20 miles from the ocean but with hot spells in summer, it flourishes in spots with good afternoon shade. This is Ceanothus concha. How many plants do you know with blue blossoms? I've had some trouble growing Ceanothus in hot locations in my yard, but this one seems to thrive here where it gets some morning and afternoon shade. This is Ceanothus Ray Hartman. Many of the Ceanothus are fairly slow growing, but this Ray Hartman is growing quite fast in this location. And for a Ceanothus, it's quite hardy too. The blue-eyed grass was still blooming in March and early April, but by May, it dies back to almost nothing, and you may think you've lost it, but its purple blossoms will reliably reappear next winter. Here is blue-eyed grass mixed with sundrops and blackfoot daisy. Brandigi sage is from the Channel Islands. Of all the plants in my garden, it is among the earliest to bloom. Its typical bloom period is January through March. 
Around my yard, the woolly blue curls blooms from February to April. By Mother's Day in early May, it is past its peak. The bloom period for Verbena de la Mina is about the same as the woolly blue curls, and in my yard, it seems to do better in partial shade than in full sun. French lavender is not native to California, but it is native to a Mediterranean climate, so it is well adapted to our hot and dry California summers. Here, with a gray hair streak butterfly, and a goldfinch picks at its seeds. Around my yard, if I cut back the Mexican bush sage Santa Barbara at the end of spring after its blooms are spent, it will grow back and bloom again in fall. Now for Cleveland sage aromas. It usually blooms in mid-spring, and by early June, it is in steep decline. But while in bloom, it attracts multiple pollinators. A honeybee, bumblebee, carpenter bee, a ladybug, some species of native bee, a hummingbird, and some variety of bee or fly. Cleveland sage is very fragrant. Just brush it with your hand and you'll immediately notice the fragrance. Next, we have pink. And I'll start with something that is light pink. This is Santa Cruz Island buckwheat and its early blossoms have a very faint pink tinge to them. They attract honeybees. Here's a surprise, an immature praying mantis. And here a morning cloak perches on it. Desert willow is found in the California desert. It grows up to 15 feet tall and produces these beautiful blossoms from spring into summer. I have five of them and I can't wait for them to grow tall and produce many more of these blossoms. Here is a very small native bee hovering near the foliage of the desert willow. This is strawberry tree, which has proven to be a great ornamental tree at the front of our home. We had this large specimen transplanted to our yard and we gave it frequent and consistent water for several years to get it established. Here, a monarch butterfly and a morning cloak. Next is red. This is apricot desert globe mallow, related to the peach colored globe mallow seen earlier. I love the color on this. It's so very bright and showy. And if you deadhead it, it will extend its bloom. Here, a cloudless sulfur butterfly. This is red buckwheat or San Miguel Island buckwheat. It doesn't receive regular irrigation water, but gets by on whatever I splash on it. It will turn rust, then brown by fall. Here is autumn sage. This one gets good morning sun, but from late morning through the afternoon, it is in full shade. My other autumn sages also prefer shade to hot direct sunlight. If you deadhead the spent blossoms, it will bloom from spring into fall. Finally, white. This St. Catherine's Lace Buckwheat starts to send up green stalks in late winter. Then little green and white protofloretts begin to form. Soon, hundreds of creamy white florets appear. Later on, they turn beige, then tan, then rust, and finally brown. At this stage, pollinators love it. Blackfoot daisy is a very versatile plant for your native garden. It will bloom from spring through fall if it has enough water over the hot summer months. It is actually better than sun drops, the yellow in the left-hand corner, at keeping its flower blossoms in droughty conditions. This one is common buckwheat, the most common form of buckwheat in Southern California. Like other buckwheats, its flowers change color through the bloom season from creamy white to beige tan, then rust, and finally brown. 
when it is in this stage, the bees love it. Finally, we get to white sage, which thrives in full sun and hot, dry conditions. While it blooms, it is a bee magnet. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of our spring garden. So until my next video, this is Rob Briggs in Fullerton, California, wishing you many pleasant moments in your garden.